looking for, though. Good afternoon, Richland College. That was Friends Ago by Sir Paul McCartney. And prior to that was some song by Elvis Presley. I think it's all right. Something along these lines. At any rate, you are listening to KDOX Web Radio, broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed on this show are our own, unless otherwise stated, and do not reflect the opinion of KDOX Web Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thrilled to be here. Thrilled to have you. How's it going? It is a, uh, it's so rainy and dark today that literally I, I woke up, um, I guess it was 7 in the morning, and it, it looked like it was nighttime. And it wasn't because the sun wasn't up yet. It's because it was completely cloudy, completely overcast. Um, kind of like how it is in uh, London, England, where Sir Paul McCartney's from. Anyhow. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't know this. Though that rain, rain your knowledge on us. Can exactly, <laughs> it's a it's a storm. It's a deluge. <laughs> Take refuge. I'm the best, dude. All right, I kicked off the cipher. Are you a poet now? I'm a master Give over us your here. SoundCloud link. <laughs> Paul McCartney yeah, was from England. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so let's um let's get into this, guys. Uh, what we like to do here, um, we got uh we got I want to say three newbies. One of them's hiding. Let me see you. Let me get on that kind of... There he is. There he is. No hiding from us. Um, so what we like to do here, this is the Philosophy Club Radio Hour. Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thunder Ducks, Thunder Birds, Thunder Cats Ho. T-Ducks. T-Ducks. We, uh, <laughs> today we have um, a pretty interesting topic, and that would be uh, braid. I'm sorry, evil. I always get those two confused. Uh, evil is the topic. Um, but before I get into it, uh, what we like to do here, y'all, is... Uh, <laughs> is uh, make introductions. Uh, and, and I'll say this, I've got uh, quite a variety here. I have a student of mine from uh, one of my intro classes, got a student from my Loss of Innocence learning community, got a student from my Honors Ethics class, and then I got my, uh, you know, my, my son, Brayden. I mean, it's my class, and I don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Oh, I just asked if you'd helped her lose her innocence, yeah. That doesn't sound right. That Loss of wrong. innocence. I, I meant everyone loses their innocence. You just, yeah. Well, it's interesting you say <laughs> they that. They go to the class, they hear what Manzi has to say, and they're no longer innocent. Philosoph <laughs> you, could say, you could say that philosophy, uh, you know, breaks your naivete. It corrupts everyone. It deepens. And if you're deep, then there's depth. And if there's depth, then there's breadth. And if there's breadth, then there's width. And if there's width... <laughs> Then there's heights. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's uh, let's make some introductions. So now now's an opportunity to sort of just you know say hello, say who you are, and if you're affiliated with any other clubs or organizations on campus, feel free to plug them. Um, yeah, we'll start with uh, in the far corner there. I'll let you introduce yourself. So just my name and yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, whatever you want. Yeah, I'm Sani Say Mama, and uh, I'm an international student. Welcome. And so Sandy, you're gonna want to really sort of eat that mic, so put it real close to you. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Right, it's fine. Yeah, that's perfect. Brayden? <laughs> hey, why did you do that? I was I had to Okay, fine. I'm Brayden. Uh, I'm sorry. I totally ruined it for you. Always ruining it. How am I supposed to pretend to be someone else now? <laughs> yeah, um How am I not myself? Yeah, I'm Brayden. I'm a student here for uh mechanical engineering. Yeah. I didn't Next. know that was your I didn't know mechanical engineering was your was your major or pursuit. Oh. I had no did. idea. See, learn something new every it day. It wasn't until like a semester ago I finally decided. <laughs> See what happens when you come sincere? I lear I actually learned things about you. Uh, Who's that? Imagine that. Who's next? <laughs> Who's to your right? That really um, loud, outgoing. What's your name? Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Stephanie, and I finally decided on my major. Like, just a few minutes ago. We've got a new philosophy major, everybody. Oh, How yeah. about that? Congratulations. <laughs> she's lost that. her innocence. She has lost her, <laughs> <laughs> she's lost her mind if she's majoring philosophy. No, I'm just joking. That's, uh, What's your major? Okay, well, I just chose my degree plan. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you chose your guided path. She's going to change it again now. Yeah. She's confused. Um, I'm bar I barely applied for, like, my associates in science. That's it. Okay. So you're science. going for science. Good. Yeah, I'm I want to be a neurologist. Mm. Got to get um. away from philosophy. Yeah. I like philosophy. Sounds though. good. Yeah, she Neurology. does. Don't listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we got here? Who's the last one? Guess. Evil. <laughs> evil. Evil incarnate. Yeah. <laughs> you got a black evil. <laughs> oh. And the white devil sitting 
two seats to your left? No. Are All you right. suggesting there's a different devil that's black and one that's white? Yeah. Well, we're going to find out whether or not good and evil is uh, is is black and white or if it's more nuanced. I think that's wow. what we're going to talk about today. They're going to cut this episode now, Mansi. <laughs> no, I think I think this is a uh, I think this is an interesting topic. And now, now again, evil uh, was something that a lot of people I think had opinions. On. Let's do the requack. Do you guys know what the requack is? Oh, I got to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Professor Manzi. I am the faculty sponsor of the Philosophy Club Radio Hour. And the Philosophy Club. The Philosophy Club Radio Hour is an extension of the Philosophy Club proper. The Philosophy Club proper meets every Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. in EO32, basically right across the hall from KDUX Studios, which is where we're at right now in EO11. Now, uh, the requack, ladies and germs, is when uh, we, we recap. You know, I never, I never thought of it quite like this. It's we, we recap like Thunder Ducks do. So we call it the requack, because we're recapping the meeting, which takes place on Richland campus, and then we're all thunder down. Mo- Mobius. <laughs> Was that you, Stephanie? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, so uh, yeah, there were a lot of opinions I found on evil. Um, <coughs> but uh, that was evil. when we were thinking, when we were kind of collectively thinking through. Not just the origin and, and the nature of evil, but how evil manifests itself in our daily life, and you know whether or not evil is something that's somewhat universal, or if evil is is um, you know relative to certain contexts, certain individuals, certain times and places in history. And we also talked about whether or not evil is um, the same thing as bad, if they're actually synonyms or if there is a difference between the two. Um, any thoughts on that? Because let's see here, who here was actually at the philosophy club meeting? <laughs> Me. Yes. So you got Stephanie, um, and that that'll do. <laughs> that's it. Okay, great. So uh, that's even better because now we can get some fresh perspectives. Um, now that we got all the riffraff out of here, all the uches and the kais and just sayonara kai. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> uh, they're all busy engaged in um, um, important stuff like uh, selling um, frozen ices. <laughs> <laughs> running the booth uh, at the honors fair. Okay, so um, I'm not bitter. Like my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on evil? Well, and, and I, I mean this. Uh, I mean this sincerely. I mean this genuinely. Um, have you ever thought about evil before? And I don't mean like doing evil, but have you ever thought about why there's evil, or just that there's evil, and that's funny? I think like everyone. Maybe not funny, but you know. Oh yeah. No, but I think everybody like does do something evil even when they don't mean to and i think there's a difference between bad and evil something can be bad for you oh, I'm a, sorry something can be like bad for you like okay like if you're if you're if you don't like, yeah if you don't like peanut butter that's just bad for you or you think it's bad i mean but it's not like evil oh. that somebody made peanut butter you know what i mean <laughs> you know it's funny um i totally get what you're saying uh and actually honestly peanut butter is like my favorite thing in the world it's like that coffee you're drinking it's like the only thing that came coffee? up to my mind i'm sorry but 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 here's the thing it's um i can imagine i've heard people do this before they've uh you know you might they might order something uh, at the subway over here or, or the mama de puka's pizza mama de luca excuse me mama de luca's pizza um it's very delicious and, and they might like get uh I don't know, a steak and cheese pizza, which I think they serve over there on the menu. And then instead of getting a steak and cheese pizza, they get a ugh, a veggie pizza. And then they look at it and they go, this is evil. Who would give me a veggie pizza? That's evil. And your point being that if a person were to say that, then they're actually, uh, they're misspeaking. They, maybe it's bad, you know, it's not of their taste, literally their taste, or they're just their sensibilities, their, their expectations weren't met. But that's not evil. That's just bad. And maybe it seems like you're saying bad relative to that person. I swear to God, I'm looking at myself in the monitor. I can look at myself and, as I talk all day. <laughs> this is just, this is great. Um, anyways, uh, so, so is that the point you're making? Have I understood you clearly? Yeah. Like something can, I mean, something you don't like or something that someone doesn't like, that if someone does something that you don't like, that doesn't necessarily mean it's evil. I mean or just been something you don't like. You know what I mean? Unless, of course, there's something that everybody doesn't like. Could then we call evil? Yeah, like murder. Yeah, that's evil. Nobody likes to get murdered. Well, I mean, the murderer might like 
committing the crime. Well, yeah, but that's the person. Well, maybe we could say something basic like pain. Is pain evil? Would you say? I'd say torture. Torture is evil. Okay, yeah. Torture is evil? <laughs> yeah, no. I think. I don't think so. Why? Interesting. Okay, so when this happens on the radio show, um, you guys actually have to physically fight. <laughs> I'm, jo- I'm joking. <laughs> I no, wish we could fight, you actually. Mean? You can fight. You can, yeah, you have to fight me. That's how you get on the radio show. Yeah, all my guests on the radio show are here because they've physically defeated me. <laughs> <laughs> Even higher. <laughs> Even especially higher. She got me in the albatross nest. <laughs> that was a callback. No, but uh, why don't you think like torture is evil? Because mm, uh, evil... Torture is pain, and pain is not evil. And if you hmm. think about it, it's like think about it. That's my tagline. It's like it's like saying evil with with evil. They say even when when you do something bad or you just think about an evil thought that comes to your mind, like murdering someone. Like murdering someone. Oh, that okay, is that's not something capital. Yeah, maybe something a little less severe. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's something less severe wouldn't be, be like evil, evil. Except if you want to say, because sometimes you do things to yourself that are not good. Maybe <laughs> you can call that evil, <laughs> evil to yourself or something. But mm. so, so if I understand you, you, you might be sitting in class. Oh, hey, what's up, Kalen? You might you might be sitting in class, you know, bored or whatever, and the kid in front of you maybe just has big old ears that are sticking out, and you're thinking to yourself, I'd love to just flick one of those ears. <laughs> That's mean. Is that and so and your point being like yeah you know that would inflict pain but you wouldn't really call that evil. Yeah, that wouldn't be evil. That is Why? something small. Do you think he would consider it evil or she would cons- to the person you're flicking? She would. The per- the person would consider it evil. The person would well, maybe look at it. what if they got bullied for that all the time? Okay. <laughs> then they would think that is evil. Inflicting pain to Does someone. Does it have to be get something it large to be pain? evil in yeah. your mind? Does it have to be something significant to be considered evil? Yeah, I think. What did you say? Um, I was asking if it, in his mind, does it have to be something significant really? in order for it to be considered evil? Does it have to be something larger than flicking someone's ear? Does it have to be something, you know, like, well, like murder? It's, yeah. yeah, like cutting off their ear, something so significant to them. Something. So let's say. Significant harm. Yeah. So let's say someone comes in you know, Van Gogh this fool. Breaks your arm. Is that you? Then go away. That's, that's, <laughs> that's something really big. But look at what Professor Menz is saying. In the case where you, you're flicking somebody's ear and you're saying you're in a, in a class. Well, you still inflicted so pain is what yeah. he's saying. But that is something really small as compared to, like, breaking somebody's arm. You're losing your arm. You're never going to get your arm back. Did they break Technology it off? Technology today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was well, going to say there's... A Philosopher, I'm trying to remember which one it was who talked about. He was he referred to some some of these lesser things as just benign evil. Ah. Um, yeah. Can you help me out with who this was, Manzi? This I don't really know philosophy. <laughs> ah, <laughs> not joking. I I actually murdered the real Professor Manzi, and I assumed his identity a few years ago. This is his twin brother. What a waste of time. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm gonna be crying about that alone in bed later. Um, yeah, so, so listen, I want to, I think you're getting at something here, all of y'all, talking about the idea of pain, and, and there might be degrees of evil. You might have, you know, your associates in evil, your bachelors in evil, your, ma- you know, degrees of evil. <laughs> uh, but this idea of, of pain, uh, oh, I, just, I just broke it. Finally. It just made a it's fart evil. <laughs> and died. Oh. Did but, you but just commit evil against quack. your quacker? <laughs> exactly. It just, we got to quack it out, folks. Um, <clears throat> This idea of, of different degrees of severity, and if you want to apply, again, evil in the, I, I guess, traditionally Christian context, and, and we talked about this at the, uh, at the club meeting yesterday. Um, yeah, you, you could say there are different kinds of sins, and sins are uh, a version of evil. But, um, but I want to go back, before we get too um, maybe uh, specific, this idea of, of pain. I mean, there are a number of philosophers throughout the history of philosophy that argue that um, Human beings, by our very nature, seek to avoid pain. And if, 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 if a human creature, by, well, creature, that implies a creator, if a human organism by, I almost said by design, if a human organism, all of them, yeah, it's, it's hard, uh, naturally seeks to avoid pain, then wouldn't a rational conclusion be that all pain is evil? Or do all human beings seek to avoid pain all the time? 
Does anybody run? Does anybody run to an ass with it? No, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, or, do we, or do we seek out pain? Well, some people do have uh, masochistic desires. Yeah. So yeah, and you know, Kalen can talk to us about that. But but what, um, <laughs> you know, what, what a... <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, okay, what about something like exercise? You know, can exercise be painful? Yeah. Can lifting weights be painful? Painful, yeah, but you gain from it. Ah, some, no pain, no pains. gain. No pain, Somebody no should pain. coin that slogan. Some pains are actually necessary. Ah, okay, like growing pains. So if some pains are necessary, <laughs> then I wonder, on the one hand, is pain therefore not necessarily evil? Yeah. Or are some pains evil and others not evil? I think it's like how you said earlier. Like, it's just like, uh, basic, like I would say a scale of like how severe something is. Yeah. So... I mean, if, if you, if you're working, you're working out, you're exercising for muscle or something, that's not severe because you're that's that's your project, like that's what you want. I you am know? so. You just made me so happy that you used that Heideggerian term the way you just did. That was perfect. Good like job. you are, you're seeking out. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it, but like basically, you're, you're it. you want, you don't want the pain, but the pain is needed to get to where yes, you're going. Necessary. Yeah, and other situations like getting your ear flicked, you weren't looking for your ear to get flicked and like be in that situation of pain. So, well, to be fair, you, you don't really know. Uh, so most pains will be considered somebody's fetishes, but uh, <laughs> even if it's severe or not hey, severe, say so you're you're causing, you have to do with another person, and say if let me see a prick, if let me see if I can prick you. Or a pain, uh, a pinch, right? He's like, let me actually inflict pain. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to inflict pain on you. You consider it pain. Because I'm doing it to you. I'm not doing it to myself. Yeah, I, I see what you're it, saying. If you do it to yourself, you're yeah. feeling the pain, but it's gonna, you're going to look at it differently when you do it to another person. Yeah, because you're freely doing it to yourself. Because you're freely doing it to yourself. You can't tickle yourself, you know what I mean? That means you always consider pain as evil when it comes to doing it, when it comes to involve with another person. Oh, okay. Yeah, it comes back to what I said. Inflicting pain to someone else is evil. What about doctors? Ah, there we are. Thank you. They're helping, but they also inflict, inflicting pain. It's Did still inflicting know. pain, though, right? But it's not Did inflicting they? pain for the purpose of inflicting pain. Oh, so maybe okay, so inflicting okay. pain isn't inherently evil. The intention behind it is what makes it evil. Yeah, yeah. The it's a little bit different then, right? Yeah, that means pain by its definition isn't purely evil. I mean, yeah, it, it depends on, yeah, as, as Kaylin's saying, the intention behind it, uh, maybe, uh, you know, other, other circumstances. It's tough to say pain is, is evil. Could we say pain is bad? And Kaylin, we're actually playing up on the uh, distinction you made in the, um, in the club yesterday. Oh, yeah, which one? I, I don't remember what I say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bad, you know, bad versus evil. Um, so okay, here, here's something uh, that, that came up in um, in the in the club. Uh, you could say that maybe let's look to nature for a second. Maybe step away from humans for a moment. Um, mm -hmm. If uh, if a volcano erupted and uh, it took out an entire the entire island of Hawaii, for example, killed a bunch of people. That's that's bad. We could say because a lot of humans lost their lives, and you know an entire state maybe literally went up in smoke. Um, shout out Hawaii. Uh, but um, can we call that evil? N not really. No. Why not? Because it's, it's that's nature. something natural. It's nature. The volcano doesn't have any intention to harm <laughs> anyone. <laughs> that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. It's uh, it has no intention. Yeah. It's just molten rock pouring out of the earth. There's no intention to cause any harm, to cause pain, to cause loss of life. Yeah. If anything, it's just doing what it was meant to do. A volcano, like. It's just doing its job, I would, I would say. You heard it. Or you heard it here first. <laughs> God made volcanoes to destroy Hawaii. The phones are lighting up, people. <laughs> Should we take a call? <laughs> so, would y'all y'all seem to be getting or seem to be leaning towards in the direction of evil being an inherently moral term, as opposed to maybe bad, or, or maybe that uh, what bad is kind of the broader kind of umbrella, and the specific subset of moral bad is what we call evil. Or bad that involves intentional willing. Yeah, I so, think that's so a fair description. Yesterday at the club, 
you were saying, or not you, but somebody was saying that. Mm-t, 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 mm-t. Okay. The club. No. Somebody was saying that evil wouldn't exist without Even humans. Even Caitlin can't take a laugh. <laughs> because. No. You've said it too many times. Okay. Uh, evil wouldn't exist without humans because, like, if humans weren't on the world, nothing would be. A, we wouldn't be. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. Like an you know what I'm trying to say? I, I'm yeah. so bad at describing. No, no, myself. you're you're getting it. You're trying to articulate a, a pretty complicated point. Yeah. So I, I think the idea was that um, if every human being uh, were to, um, I don't know, suddenly leave the face of the earth, um, maybe they all die or whatever. Alien uh, kidnapping. What's that called? The point being is this. Abduction. Abduction, yeah, that's it. <laughs> if all... Jeez. <laughs> when the thunder acts come down... <laughs> exactly, and yeah. If, if, if all human beings were to no longer be on the planet Earth, would there be any evil in the world? Or is evil... And that's... I think that's kind of what we were getting at when I we took that angle of if, if evil is something of a human phenomenon. Yeah, I think evil is like a human-made concept. I don't I think say. it's exclusively humans. There's... Um, like if you look at some other animals, like some of the, let's say a great ape, there's still like variations in their behavior. Very apeshins. Very yeah, very apeshins in their behavior. Some of them will be aggressive and violent toward others, while as it's not necessarily a trait that's but just part of their nature. It's not like all. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's like it's accidental. It's it could be um, otherwise. But yeah. nobody's. Well, it could be intentional, is what I'm saying. No, it can't be intentional. Oh, interesting. Oh. For an animal? For an animal? For, a, for an animal. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think the thing is this. An animal can certainly intend to do harm on another animal. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that's what my dog does if there's ever an intruder. <laughs> I hope he <laughs> intends to hurt the, the intruder. Um, <clears throat> shout out my ex-wife. Oh, joking. Um, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I think I think Brayden's point is that um, you wouldn't then call the dog evil. <laughs> Yeah. The dog is kind mm -hmm. of doing what what is in its nature slash what it was conditioned to do. Or maybe well, it depends. Do. The dog is in this case trying to protect you, while as maybe if it was just oh, randomly okay. biting children <laughs> instead of your ex-wife, um, you it might that? be described as <laughs> the thought of a dog. The thought of my little chihuahua <laughs> running around biting children. Oh, it's a chihuahua. To well, then it probably would. Shout out Miles. <laughs> Shout out Miles. It's my dog's name. Yeah, I. Uh, he, he actually does do that. He hates children. Mm. I'm not joking. He has been called evil, and I've been called evil for letting him, uh, you know, bite the children for laughing as he attacks children. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I make sure he doesn't actually inflict any harm on the children. But the, the, the point is this. Well, th no, that's interesting because would could you call me evil if I train my dog to attack people without justification? Yes. Why? Because I'm not doing anything. Like your initial. You are though yeah, indirectly. Though just because you're not directly attacking them doesn't mean you're not causing them harm knowingly. It's it's not, you're not absolved if you say, hey, um, Uche, why don't you go punch this guy? <laughs> yeah, that was going to be my next example. Um, and he does it. what? Well, he, he did. That's why he's not here right now. Ah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Direct so incitements to imminent lawless action. Like your, your initial... Well, I was speaking right? from a legal stance. Like I was just saying, from a moral stance, you're not innocent because you still... You cause that if you if you go up to your friend and you say, "Hey, can you hit this guy for me?" and your friend does it, they did it because essentially because you asked. You know, you're not. Look at the intention behind it. Yeah, I, I could yeah. just be like, I was only joking. Well, <laughs> yeah, like, like and maybe you, maybe you were, but not if you, not necessarily. What I'm saying is, if you intended to do them for them to do harm, then it is your then it is your fault, and you could be considered evil. You're if culpable. You, yeah, you're if you. Okay, yes, if that so was your intention. So it wouldn't be just what they said, it'd be why they said it. Yeah, that's so part of the issue with quantifying evil like what was is it's very difficult to say what people's intentions are. Is Manzi evil for having his dog bite all those children? Yes, it's hard to say. Or is he the funniest guy in Dallas? Them. Is that his intention, <laughs> to make the dog harm children? <laughs> if the intention was for him to, for the dog to protect you. Eat that mic. You, that would be good. That wouldn't be evil. If a means of protection would be sorry. If a means for protection would be uh, for the dog to bite others or harm others, as long as you get him protected, if that's what you train the dog for. The intention behind it isn't evil, but um. Mm -hmm. But he said everyone. He said. But if you train the dog to just 
bite be, everyone. Just bite every anybody. Or to the just dog protect, says. I think there's a difference between protecting, um, teaching the dog to protect you, and teaching the dog, dog to, to just bite. To everyone be like Kujo. Yeah. yeah. Think like of a junkyard dog. Yeah. Yeah. So so then I guess let me let me pose this question to you, and, and it's along similar lines. Uh, Dude, are dogs, are dogs considered to be neither evil nor, nor good insofar as they don't really make decisions? <laughs> like their stimulus response, you can condition them to respond to certain stimuli, but they're not deliberating. You know, they're not thinking. So there's no real intent behind what they do. They, they, they are impulsive. And so maybe in the moment they intend to defend themselves. And that's why they're attacking the child. Because for, to my chihuahua, the, the toddler's still a giant. So um, maybe that's what it is. Uh, and if that's the case, then we're back at square one. We're back at this idea that evil is, is, is something that is uh, an interpretive uh, or, or, or value-laden term specifically for humans. Insofar as humans are the ones that decide, or at the very least consent with or, or disagree with, the established values of a society. So when we talk about committing evil, we might be talking about committing evil relative to a certain um, value system, to a certain culture, to a certain time and place. Or are we talking about evil on a deeper, more universal level, where regardless of time, regardless of place, regardless of, of culture or, or language or what have you, the where, the when, um, certain things are just never good, which is to say they're always evil and not bad. Like, you know, uh, when I work out and then the next day my, my muscles are, are, are in pain, uh, you know, I don't say that's evil. You know, it's bad. It's bad to be in pain in that way. But I mean evil in the sense of malicious intent. I feel like this is a like a really bad example, but like Evil a long example. time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't believe it. like a few decades ago, um, you know, segregation was like a huge thing. So, what's that? Segregation. I'm joking. Keep going. <laughs> it's like, is he serious right now? No, but I thought you were a professor. <laughs> He's yeah. not a professor of again. history. He hasn't <laughs> taken my class. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but anyways, um, what was, like, once considered normal, like, back then is now okay. considered evil. So I think Universally, perhaps. Yeah, so I think Hopefully. evil does change within, like, time. Um, okay, that's or interesting. Some things are considered, e like, more evil over time or less evil over time. So, but I just mean, because just segregation... Just thought, sorry. No, no, you're fine. That was good. I yeah. think that was a good example. I agree. But just because segregation in the U.S. was considered either good or normal you know, at a certain time, does that mean it in fact was? Or does it mean that the people who thought that were just wrong at mm. the time and now we've you know, kind of learned better? Uh, I think they were wrong and that we've learned better. Well, then it wasn't just culturally relative mm. in that case, right? Our culture was maybe you could say wrong and then we corrected. Yeah. So it's like somebody... <laughs> she's just like... I guess so. <laughs> Why did I even talk? Sorry. Well, no, no, this is a really, this is a really important type <laughs> no, of question. I think, you, I think you're nailing it. I'll be honest with you. Thanks. Yeah. Nailing him right to that cross. Evil. I think... Um, wow. But I it think was culturally acceptable back then. Yeah, that's... Cultural, he was yeah. a criminal and... <laughs> Talking about Jesus? Yeah, he was a criminal to the, to the Roman Empire. And in the eyes of the Roman Empire, he was a criminal and the normal thing to do was nail him to a cross. Hmm. Mm. If you do like, if you would collaborate on that, that I'm actually generally argument. interested. Well, before we go into that, let's stay with a little focus. We're losing the viewers here. <laughs> uh, this just in, we have no callers on, on hold. Uh, Wait, I, I, people can actually call in here? No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Stop. I've got oh, President K. Eggleston on line three. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're too busy. No, I, I think. Um, <laughs> I think what you're what you're getting at is this idea of of evil as something that is uh, the result of a very set, very established, immutable, unchangeable understanding of the world and you know the values intrinsic therein. So, for example, if you if you're raised to think that there's such a thing as Santa Claus, or or you're raised to think that two plus two equals five, and for I don't know hundreds of years your culture agreed that two plus two equals five, then you realize that two plus two equals four. And now your culture has come to this realization. Um, I don't think that's a change in the truth itself. It's like a, two plus two used to mean five, used to equal five in our culture. And now it equals four. No, it's like we had it wrong. 
and now we have it right. Is that kind of what you're saying? Or are you saying, you know, right and wrong itself is determined by a particular community, a particular society or culture? Or I think it goes both ways. Yeah. That's what she said. How, how, how does it go both ways? Because, for example, <laughs> Childish. Um, we, there are certain countries in Africa, for example, that they're allowed to have um, slaves. And uh, I wouldn't say exactly slaves, but they can have employees that work at their homes and like servants. Like indentured servants. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're allowed to have that. As a culture, I think it's no. how, I think it's how they, they are, you know. I, I think they don't see it as evil, but. But, but does, does that make them right or wrong? Like can, we, can we then say. Yeah, like okay, two plus two equals five. Yeah, which yeah. Can, which can later on be two plus two equals four. Or if what if it's never sense. that? What if it's two plus two equals five for forever? No, it can't be forever. There will definitely be a time that will come when it's going to be two plus two equals four. I don't know. May, I hope so. <laughs> I, I mean, but, but here's the thing is that if you're raised in a culture that says our truths are absolute truths and never changing, and then that culture's truths are things like two plus two equals five or slavery is a good thing. Um, there's a danger that that culture's mindset will remain what it is in, in perpetuity, which again would, would suggest that, well, well, I guess are we responsible for, for that evil to, to some degree, if at all? Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this. We're, um, we're kind of running out of time here. We only have nine minutes left and uh, there is the rock shop. No, I'm sorry. Where are we at? Oh. Oh, no, there's nobody after us. Oh, even better. Oh, you know what it is? Oh, yeah, I almost, I almost totally forgot about this. I'm leading a phenomenology workshop in like eight minutes um, over at the Learning Center. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's why, I, have, that's why I, have a, I was like, we have, a, we have a quick out. We have a, a hard out at one. Why? It's because of me. Um, although you guys are free to stay longer, free to linger. But, uh, but so before I go anyways, I, I, I want to get to this one thing. Um, we can all talk bad about him when he leaves. <laughs> what else is no? Ramsey sucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree. Serious. I'll Please agree with you me. there. No, <laughs> um, well, you'll feel either way. Uh, <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about evil, um, and this is kind of where we ended uh, with regards to this idea of um, the political definition of evil. So, evil with regards, and we're already kind of talking about it. Interestingly enough, via the slavery example, um, evil as something that is a systematic attempt to rob you of your rights. So, evil, evil in a way that transcends your particular ideology, uh, the- theologically speaking. Uh, it, it goes beyond whatever your preferences are, whatever your, your values are. It's, it's evil in a legitimate or illegitimate political sense where it's like we're taking away your freedom for the good of X or Y or Z. Maybe that's what evil is because... Evil is as evil does. Like if you are taking someone's right, how you said yesterday of just simply living you're murdering them and you would consider murder evil yeah and if you want it well if you want to define what is good as the liberty of all rational human beings then you know ipso facto uh what you define as evil would be the uh, the oppression or the the t- the robbing of those same liberties that one needs in order to be fully human and so yeah i mean murdering somebody <coughs> definitely makes them not free because now they're not free to do anything because they did. But there are other more subtle ways of potentially uh, inflicting evil that isn't physical pain like we were talking about before. That isn't any, it doesn't even seem painful. It just becomes confining. Your options shrink. You become limited. Your, 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 your pursuit of happiness and, you know, your, your life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, your freedom to do all these things, I use one example, might be shrinking to the point where you don't even recognize how unfree you are. And, and so you could be the victim of evil without even realizing it, if you think about it in those terms. Assuming we define freedom as a necessary component for the pursuit of something like liberty. Thoughts? I think we're really quiet. So, but if you define evil as that, is it evil to put someone in jail for their crimes? Good question. What do you guys think? I think no. that's a great question, Braden. Sorry. No. <laughs> Because the way <laughs> Eat that money. Well, that settles it. <laughs> the way the way well the way Manzi presented it seems to say that denying people their freedom is the ultimate evil. There's nothing really worse Definitely. than divi- defying s- than denying someone their freedom, which is would be worse say it would be to say that it's worse that we 
Yeah. That's that we that argument. we put criminals in jail. Are then we fighting evil then, with evil? Yeah. Then the, that let's say you steal millions of dollars and hurt people and you know whatever you do, as long as you're not denying someone of their freedom, it's worse to put them in jail. Who gives Who gives us freedom? Who defines the freedom? Good question. That would be Manson. Because we all we all are human beings, so. Is there some superhuman being somewhere who, who's the person saying, hey, this is meant to be freedom. This is me- not meant to be freedom. Mm. Oh. It's Manzi, yeah. <laughs> it's Manzi. Uh, I, think, um, I, I think you could say that our rationality, you know, wherever or however we got that or where it came from, our rationality allows us to transcend that sort of here and now stimulus response approach to things to something that's more deliberate, more intent or intentional. Um, and insofar as we're free to follow through on voluntary actions, you could say that freedom is necessary for, for our humanity to flourish, for our, our personal individual nature to flourish. Is somebody, is somebody fake snoring? No. Is somebody no. fake? That's my move. You go. <laughs> no, I was looking for the, for the duck ringtone since you broke your duck call. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. Your duck call, and I... Bump the wrong one. I'm a little sensitive. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, uh, and, and so, so to your to your point, then it, it would seem like, uh, you know, if you willfully with intent do something that justifies us stripping you of your freedoms, then we're honoring your freedom by treating you like an autonomous human being. So you know, I, I, if my dog poos all over the rug, um, I'm not going to put him in jail and say, "Think about what you've done." That wouldn't make any sense. You know, because he's not an autonomous creature. He didn't, he didn't, he doesn't think. He's not, a, he doesn't think. He's a dog. Um, Back but, to this. <laughs> yeah, and that's not, no, I know, I was trying to avoid it. Um, but a human being thinks about what it, he, or has the potential to think about what he or she's going to do and then does it. So you can, you can say they're morally culpable. You could say, no, you knew that you were trying to inflict evil. You did so knowingly. And yeah. so knowingly, we have a responsibility to protect the citizens of this nation, you could say, or the people in our community, members of our community, from somebody who is looking to actually inflict harm on others and thereby rob them of their individual freedom. We now return you to our discussion on capital punishment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, um, Manzi, capital punishment, yeah or nay? <laughs> uh, all right, guys, I'll be honest with you. I have to run <laughs> across campus to uh, Medina to a lear- for the learning center, so I'm going to say a few plugs. Um, you guys might have to wrap it up for me. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, nobody said anything. <laughs> okay. Sure. I'll, uh, I think I'll, we're I'll wrapping I'll up right now. Okay, we're going to wrap up right now. We can wrap up right now. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, final thoughts. Um, do we believe in evil? <laughs> yes or yes. no? Yes. Yeah. But I still think it's a human. I think, so. I think it's a human concept. Yeah. Okay, you heard it here first. All of my guests are pro evil. <laughs> you are listening to KDUX Web Radio, broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed on this show are our own, unless otherwise stated. Well, their own, unless otherwise stated, and do not reflect the opinion of KDUX Web Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. Um, real quick here. Uh, first of all, we apologize for starting a little late. Um, the previous show ran over, um, and uh, no fault and of anybody's. Manzi didn't know how to cut the song. Oh, yeah, then there's that. <laughs> I was singing along to the song right before us, and then I forgot to hit the button to make us start, and so we had to go through one more song. It was great. You got to hear me singing. Um, it was uh, great. We cried. <laughs> speaking of evil and failing students, um, <clears throat> a couple of plugs real quick. In uh, 60, no, 120 seconds, <laughs> maybe, depending on how I run. Well, I'm a thunder duck, so I guess I waddle. Um, I'll be leading a phenomenology workshop and part of the phenomenology workshop series. This is the phenomenology of listening. I'll be going through the various uh, senses. Next month will be phenomenology of seeing or sight. And then December will be phenomenology of feeling. And this is phenomenology of listening. Um, Philosophy Club meets every Tuesday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in EO32. And then you can catch the Philosophy Club radio hour every Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. roughly. Um, And then you can find us on YouTube if you can't uh, catch us live. Uh, International Film Series um, kicks off uh, a week from today. So 4 o'clock tomorrow in Crockett, room 240 something or other, uh, the Philosophy Club will be collaborating with the International Film Series to show the movie Wild Strawberries by Ingmar Bergman. Um, it's a very existentialist movie, a very artsy movie, a um, very deep movie. It's, it's not rated, so there's some sensitive material, but, uh, but it's, um, it's, it's all in good taste. And then tomorrow there is Fresh Check Day, alleviating the stigma of... Uh, of um, uh, uh, what is it? What are you leaving the stigma of? Alleviating the stigma of oh, um, uh, various forms of uh, mental illness. That's what it is. 
So uh, the Philosophy Club is hosting the Stop and Chill booth. So if you come to our booth, you can uh, stop and chill. We have, we'll have bean bags. Um, we'll have uh, adult coloring books. Um, I mean coloring books for adults, not pornographic coloring books. I want to make sure that's clear. That was apparently unclear. Um, <laughs> we'll also have things like music and hot tea. Those and, are in uh, Mandy's private essential collection. Essential <laughs> oils and lava lamps. How dare you? Yeah. Um, so stop by and come literally come kick it with us. Come chill with us. That's what we're there for. Um, Wait, what are we kicking? Uh, you in the face. Uh, ah. Evil pain. Stress relief. Stress relief. relief. <laughs> exactly. And, um, yeah, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop it there. We have more plugs, uh, but we'll announce those when uh, we're getting closer to the uh, dates of the events. Uh, one last thing, though. Follow us on uh, Twitter at RLC Philosophy. Follow us on Facebook at RLC Philosophy. And follow us on Instagram at RLC Philosophy. <laughs> we're, uh, we're everywhere. Um, and so, uh, yeah. To my guests, thank you for coming, and um, I have to bolt. So uh, one last thing we like to do here before we leave is uh, say my, my famous tagline. You may not believe in evil, but evil believes in evil. <laughs> <laughs> that should, that's my real one. That's that Straussian subtext one. Uh, it's think about it. So on the count of three, everyone's going to say think about it. You guys ready? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. You guys ready? Okay, one, two, three. Think, think about, about it. it. Think no. about it. <laughs>